Ashtabula, Ashtabula Harbor sits in the northeast corner of the state of Ohio. So if you envision the state, uh, we are in the upper right-hand corner, right on Lake Erie. We are equidistant between Cleveland, which is 50 miles to our west, and Erie, Pennsylvania, that is 50 miles to our east and also on Lake Erie. Because of the Ashtabula River, we are one of the primary entrances to Lake Erie from a port standpoint. When the rail spur or the railroad was completed that connected the harbor to Youngstown, the Ashtabula Harbor became the most direct link to the booming steel mills of Youngstown and then on to Pittsburgh. And this was be the mid-1870s and we shortly thereafter became the busiest port on the Great Lakes and one of the busiest ports in the world. My great aunt was a teenager at the time and claimed that, and I think the claim was backed up in an article in the New York Times at that time, that Ashtabula Harbor was one of the three roughest ports in the world along with Calcutta and Shanghai. It would take about 150 men to unload a typical ship full of iron ore. That brought a tremendous influx of immigrants into the harbor. Ethnic groups, Italians, Finns, Swedes, Germans, Portuguese, I think. And there was great competition among those ethnic groups to get a ship to let them unload. And hard feelings for those that weren't chosen, which were settled at night. I know that uh, my great-grandfather had a store, about, really about four buildings from our store on Bridge Street at the time, in the 1870s, 1880s. He did a tremendous business in linoleum because there would be fights in the bars and the brothels uh, along Bridge Street every evening and usually shootings or knifings and the blood would get on the floor and rather than try to clean it up they just slap down another layer of linoleum and it was a it was a boom time and a story that really has never been in my view fully told really the boom years of the harbor were from the 1870s until just after 1900 when that Conneaut native George Hewlett invented something. And he invented the Hewlett or unloader. And now instead of, you know, a hundred guys with wheelbarrows, you had this thing that could take a, an 18 ton bite and unload. And that began kind of the decline of the the dock workers kind of thing. Now the railroad was still very active here, so the railroad was still going, but by, it's interesting, by the 1920s, most of the harbor branches of the Main Avenue stores closed. I also have seen a letter that my, but now my grandfather, who was now operating the store here on Bridge Street, had sent to his sister, who was living in Colorado at the time, expressing his concern about the drop in traffic and the drop in business in the early 20th century. And sure enough, in, I think it was 1914, my grandfather sold the Harbor store and moved his store up to Main Avenue. I think that the commercial activity gradually but inexorably shifted from the harbor, which had been the center, up to Main Avenue. And I think the harbor was, you know, slowly declining. There were still some stores that I think did very well, and there was still significant shipping business, but nothing like the boom period. Then when the mall opened in about 1992, I think it might have been the final blow to Bridge Street at the time. Whatever commercial uh, retailing was left on Bridge Street was pretty much put behind the eight ball. I was born in Ashtabula a long time ago. 
and I ended up going to work for the family company, which was the old Carlisle Allen Company. And um, turned out I liked it and spent the next 30 years, really, um, with Carlisle's. Tony and I, my wife, who also worked at Carlisle's, we started this little store on Bridge Street in 2002. We love the atmosphere, the, the, these old buildings. Our, the building we're in is 1889, wonderful brick walls, high ceilings, great sense of history. And then, of course, being kind of next to this wonderful river and lake and the parks nearby and the beaches nearby. It just had a great feel. We knew that for what we wanted to do, which was basically a gift home furnishing store, this was a tough market. By the time we opened in 2002, most of those existing stores, the Riverfront Trader, Silhouette Shop, Four Flags, and the restaurant in Hulbert's were experiencing losses of business, primarily due to the mall. And despite our concerns about the market, we found ourselves doing much better than we had anticipated. And it indicated to me and Tony the great potential that Bridge Street had. Whenever there's a hard time, it seems like people band together more. I think when the bridge was up, there was adversity. Business owners, building owners, people had uh, significant challenges. Uh, you know, revenue was difficult to come by. They created an island out of Bridge Street. Uh, there was no way to access it from the east side. When the realization sunk in that, that our, act, our traffic was going to cease for at least six months, and it actually turned out to be more like a year, people on Bridge Street sort of said, what the hell are we going to do? And we need to get together and talk about this. I remember by after Christmas, sometime in January or February, early winter of 08, um, there was a meeting of all interested parties. We agreed that we needed to develop some uh, schedule of activities to generate traffic to get people to put up with the inconvenience of coming to Bridge Street. Luckily, Alice McCarthy, the, the wife of Tim, the foundation of the Business of Good, volunteered to sort of be the coordinator for activities, and we generated a series of events under the umbrella of Hoppin' in the Harbor. And that was uh, successful enough that we survived. Um, and. From that, we determined that in order to do this, we had to have at least 20 people come up with $100 each so that we had a little kitty uh, to operate. And we also went out and got some major sponsors to help pay for these events of Hoppin' in the Harbor. And we, uh, Key Bank, First Merit Bank, Andover Bank, the Star Beacon and Kent State of Ashtabula all ponied up and really helped us survive. I think what's um, different about the Liftbridge Community Association, different from a typical merchants association, is that our vision is a large vision. Uh, it's not simply how do we advertise to get more people to come to the harbor and come to my store. It is to become a major regional destination for uh, tourism, recreation, and entertainment. That's a, that's a big goal. And I think it has inspired people to see what is possible. And our membership has grown from 20 members who are primarily concerned about what do we do to survive when the lift bridge was under repair for about a year and our, we had no traffic coming down uh, 531 or Bridge Street. Um, has evolved from that to now we have 50 members, uh, quite a number of whom have no direct interest or involvement in Bridge Street per se, but see the value to the county really and to our region if we are successful in becoming this major regional draw.